This was the biggest demonstration by Vladimir Putin's critics in years. Tens of thousands of Russians took to the streets, sparked by the imprisonment of one man. An anger about social injustice, political repression, and staggering corruption at the heart of the Kremlin. But the protests were violently crushed by the police. Since then, the repression has escalated as Putin seeks to silence all dissent, eliminating political opponents, <laughs> exploiting the courts, and purging Russia of free speech. The games are over, and repression is no longer about prevention. It's now about elimination of threat. Alexei Navalny has become the undisputed leader of Russia's opposition. It was his investigations into government corruption that stirred Russia from political apathy. His film about Putin's billion-dollar secret palace on the Black Sea had 120 million views and was watched by at least a quarter of the Russian population. Это не загородный дом, не дача, не резиденция. Это целый город, а скорее королевство. Navalny's fresh approach galvanized opposition in Russia. Мы будем жить нормально только когда перестанем терпеть чиновников, которые воруют. Not only that, he had a plan to demonstrate just how much resistance there was to Putin's ruling party. Итак, каждый год в стране происходят сотни выборов различного уровня, и почти всегда на них побеждает Единая Россия. In the regional elections in 2019, he promoted a new smart voting project, rallying voters behind whichever candidate had the best chance of ousting the United Russia representative. One goal of his smart voting was destroy the monopoly. Once you have that opening, that starts a chemical reaction of politics and struggle within the elites. And he was right, and you know, in several regions it did happen. He rightly identified the weak spot, and the Kremlin saw it as a major threat. At the same time, a key pillar of Putin's popularity is weakening – economic growth. Since 2014, Russia's GDP has dropped by almost 30 percent, and a fiscal crisis in 2014 sparked a sharp devaluation of the ruble, from which it's yet to recover. With vocal opposition on the rise and the economy starting to slide, Putin acted. Prominent Kremlin critic is in a coma, fighting for his life in a German hospital. These pictures show him being stretched into an ambulance. He was then airlifted to Berlin. The question is, who did this? When the attempt to assassinate Navalny failed, he was thrown in jail, prompting the nationwide protests in January. The games are over, and the repression is no longer about prevention. It's now about elimination of threat. Violeta Grudner ran Navalny's headquarters in Murmansk, a port city in the northwest of Russia. With Navalny in a penal colony, the Kremlin moved to crush his whole movement. Violetta's office and 36 others in Navalny's network were forced to close after prosecutors labelled Navalny's anti-corruption foundation an extremist organisation. They applied the law retrospectively, meaning that anybody who had ever been associated with that organisation should be treated as extremists. So, effectively, they've equated Navalny's organisation with ISIS. Власть ошиблась со своим решением ликвидировать юридические лица в виде штабов Навального в ФБК, потому что она фактически сделала из нас обычных региональных менеджеров, лоббистов, политиками. Violetta decided to stand as an independent candidate in the local elections. Да, я заявила 9 апреля о том, что я собираюсь баллотироваться, поблагодарила своих недругов. Вот, и так, да, действительно, началась моя избирательная кампания. Очень ярко, эффектно. A cycle of intimidation began. Her headquarters were vandalized, her campaign staff were targeted and intimidated, 
with arrests and trumped up charges of drug trafficking. And the authorities even found a way to use the pandemic to disrupt Violetta's campaign. Despite testing negative, she was forcibly detained in a COVID hospital. Это было не медицинское дело. Это полностью скоординированная политическая акция. This meant she couldn't submit the documents needed to stand as a candidate. Это было для меня тюрьмой. The Kremlin is very versatile in using different tactics to crush not just political opposition, but to deal with any sources of discontent or political dissidents. They have used COVID very imaginatively. Instead of actually saving Russian lives, they've used it as a repressive measure. Violetta was only released from the hospital weeks later after going on an eight-day hunger strike. Following her release, Violetta was more determined than ever. Against all the odds, she managed to submit the papers that formally registered her as a candidate. She'd managed to stay in the running longer than the handful of other former Navalny coordinators who'd also tried to stand in elections around the country. I'm the last candidate of Alexei Navalny. Just one day later, she was called to a meeting of the election commission. Принять к сведению информацию о том, что в связи с отсутствием пассивного избирательного права Грудина Виолетта Андреевна 25.01.1990 года рождения выдает статус выдвинутого кандидата. Кто за то, чтобы принять данное решение, прошу голосовать. Like Navalny's allies before her, she was identified as a former member of an extremist organization and banned from standing. In the 2021 State Duma elections, some opposition deputies, mainly running on the Communist Party ticket, did manage to get onto the ballot. But the elections were rigged. Putin's United Russia won, retaining a two-thirds majority in parliament big enough to enable Putin to change the Russian constitution. And it wouldn't be the first time. In 2020, he pushed through amendments that will allow him to remain in office for at least another 16 years. As the 2024 presidential election approaches, Putin has a personal vested interest in ensuring the opposition cannot compete. Putin is not in the position to leave office anymore. His power, his money, his life, are all tied together in that office in the Kremlin. Uh, if he were to lose power, the chances of him retiring peacefully are very, very slim. The chances of his cronies retaining their ill-gotten wealth is close to zero. Protecting Putin's regime means ramping up spending on police and security forces. In 2020, one-tenth of the budget was allocated to domestic security. You have this spiral of repression. The more it represses, the more discontent there is. The more discontent there is, the more it needs to repress, the more money it gets. Those who are charged face almost certain conviction. In 2020, 99.64% of those tried were found guilty. According to the World Justice Project, Russia has consistently had more government influence in its criminal justice system than almost any other country in the rule of law index. Russia doesn't have an independent legal system. The legal system is one of the belts of uh, political power in Russia. Russia doesn't have the rule of law. It has the law of the ruler. In the aftermath of the January protests, more than 11,000 people were arrested and 90 criminal cases were launched. Some 200 journalists were harassed and detained. Ala Gudnikova is a student journalist who's awaiting trial. И нас поместили под домашний арест за двухминутное правозащитное видео, которое было выложено на YouTube, которое посмотрело тысячу человек. 
she participated in a video with three friends, which encouraged young people to exercise their legal right to protest. Мы якобы вовлекали подростков, несовершеннолетних, в опасную для жизни деятельность. То есть якобы они могли посмотреть наше видео, вдохновиться, пойти на митинг, на митинге заболеть короной и умереть. Although the students complied with the authorities' request to take the film down, their homes were raided. Я еще была в полусне, и я испугалась этого громкого крика, я просто на автомате открыла дверь и зашло в квартиру 10 или около того мужчин, часть из которых была в черных балаклавах, в бронежилетах, с оружием. They've spent months under house arrest, awaiting their day in court. If convicted, the group could face up to three years in prison. Но да, я очень хорошо вообще-то понимаю, как устроен страх и как устроена тревога. Это просто какая-то лавина чувств, которые тебя захватывает, и ты уже не можешь рационально оценивать ситуацию. То есть тебе просто очень панически страшно, и ты хочешь, у тебя как бы инстинкт какого-то самосохранения. Ты хочешь куда-то забиться в какой-то такой уголочек, чтобы тебя оттуда не могли застать, чтобы можно было, ну, как-то перевести дыхание и до тебя не дотянулись. Journalists who don't toe Putin's line can now be branded by the government as foreign agents, forced to include a disclaimer with anything they publish or broadcast. This is a label which people have to wear symbolically. It's humiliating, it stigmatizes people, it, it makes them untouchable. Ну, десятки сейчас есть uh, изданий и отдельных журналистов, этих изданий, журналисток, которых признали иноагентами и нежелательными организациями, и этот масштаб прям ужасает. То есть, да, они буквально просто пытаются заставить э, журналистов молчать. Worse is being branded an undesirable organization, any cooperation of which is punishable by several years in prison. So far, dozens of organizations are on the list, the majority added in the past two years. Despite the clampdown, many journalists continue to fight. The number of investigative journalists, the quality of their work, is unlike anything we've seen in the past 20-30 years. The fact that Novaya Gazeta, one of Russia's oldest newspapers, and its editor, Dmitry Muratov, were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize is partly a recognition of that extraordinary determination to carry on. Although TV news remains a stronghold for Putin, spewing out constant propaganda, its popularity is being challenged by the internet, social media and YouTube. И когда власть задушила независимые СМИ, остатки людей, которые также чувствуют острую потребность справедливости, нашли другие формы трансляции своего мнения. Они ушли в интернет. И in the past five years, the share of traditional sources of information, TV, radio, newspapers, has shrunk from 75% to 45%. The share of online sources of information has grown from 18% to 45%. The Kremlin is desperately trying to regain control over that information space. It's trying to force foreign platforms, particularly YouTube, to censor content. The люди боятся поставить лишний раз лайк, репостнуть, написать комментарий, потому что власть четко продемонстрировала, что будет с этими инакомыслящими. Сколько примеров людей, которые сидят за лайки. Господи, в современном мире. For opponents like Violetta, the pressure to leave grows by the day. Хочу, но не могу. Меня здесь ничего не держит. Ни в этом городе, ни в этой стране. People are actively encouraged to leave the country, out of sight, out of mind. Russia is experiencing its largest political exodus since the 1970s. Those who stay increasingly live in dread. According to a poll by the Levada Center, the share of Russia's population who fear repression and state violence is at an all-time high. And as for the rest, Putin will rely on the other force that served him well throughout his two-decade-long reign, apathy.
People have jobs, they have kids. They might not be in as good a financial state as they were 10 years ago, but they're still in a lot better financial and economic state than they were 20 or 30 years ago. So there is a lot to lose and there is a lot to risk. You can find more of our coverage on Russian repression by clicking on the link. And viewers in the UK can also watch a full-length documentary on what this repression means for members of the opposition in Russia on the ITV Hub. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.